In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So up until this point, we've spoken about what prayer is, the different qualities of prayer. And now we're going to start to speak about the different kinds of prayer. This would be a long section with lots of divisions and subdivisions in it. So there are three kinds of prayer, generally speaking. There is liturgical prayer, vocal prayer, and mental prayer. Liturgical prayer is the church's public prayer. And this is offered in the name of the whole church to God. So that's a distinction we have to understand. When I say it's the church's public prayer, I'm not referring to just the fact that a lot of people are physically present there. I mean, it's public in this sense, that the church instituted it, and that we are praying in the name of the whole church and in the name of Christ. So an example of liturgical prayer is the Mass. Again, it's the divine office, at least when one is appointed to pray the divine office. Those are liturgical prayers. And in these, it's more than just the individual praying. It's not just me praying as uh, Richard Wallace. It's me praying in the name of the church. The whole church is praying. So let's elaborate on this a little bit. <clears throat> when a priest says Mass by himself, that is not even with any servers, he turns around and he still says, Dominus Fabiscum. He doesn't get a reply because no one's in the church. So he says it himself, Ecum Spiritu Tuo. But we have to understand, because he's doing a liturgical action, the whole church is still present at his mass mystically, even though no one is present there physically. This is the amazing and mysterious thing about the liturgy. It's bigger than us. It's not just me praying. The whole church is present there. It's not just my personal intentions. It's the whole church's intentions. That's why, for example, at mass, when we pray the collects, and the secret and the post-communion, we're not asking for individual things that we want. We ask for what the church wants. We say, like we said a few Sundays ago, we ask God to grant us an increase of faith, hope, and charity. Now, maybe any of us weren't even thinking about that. Maybe we were asking for something else, like, you know, health, you know, good health. But... The church asks for faith, hope, and charity that Sunday. So that's what the church prays for. So we could spend a lot of time talking about this, but uh, we'll have to move on now. Basically, uh, liturgical prayer is the greatest of all prayer. Because it's not just me as an, as an individual praying. It's the whole church and Christ praying to God the Father. Our personal prayers, you know, like the things we do, like the rosary and stuff, our personal prayers, in fact, they drive us towards liturgical prayer as a sort of icing on the cake, if you will. Because, you know, during the week, we're praying for all our personal intentions, praying our rosaries, practicing mortification and all these things. And then on Sunday, we go to Mass, we bring all of our intentions, all of the fruits of our prayers, we bring them to the altar and bring them to, uh, bring them to God during the Mass. And that's like the icing on the cake of all of our personal prayers. So it's liturgical prayer. Secondly, we have vocal prayer. <clears throat> vocal prayer, we all know what this is. Um, vocal prayer is prayer which makes primary use of words. Examples, litanies, the memorare, you know, the prayers that we read from the Missal before and after Holy Communion, before after Mass. 
the rosary, but the rosary is a very interesting prayer, which is also mental prayer. So vocal prayers are prayers that make primary use of words. We speak them. And vocal prayers are essential. Um, they're really great for community prayer. They're essential for man because we're made not only of a soul, but of a body as well. So we speak physical sounds or actually speak because we have a body. We praise God through our body as well. Vocal prayer is good because it teaches, it really teaches us how to pray. It teaches us what to say, what to ask for. Just like Christ taught his disciples how to pray. He, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And then he taught them the Our Father. He taught them what to ask for, what to say to God, those sort of things. That's a vocal prayer. And then next we have mental prayer. Mental prayer is primarily silent and interior without the use of word formulas. We could pray the Our Father as a vocal prayer, and that's what we do, for example, during Mass, when we pray the Rosary. But we can also pray it as mental prayer. There's a story I heard one time of a lady who wanted to become a nun and she went for the uh, went to the monastery to be interviewed by the, uh, the mother superior of the community and the mother superior said to her how long does it take you to pray in our father and the lady said mm, 30 minutes and at that the mother superior said okay you're in and she, she joined the community so one our father lasted her 30 minutes I don't think that's vocal prayer. I think that's mental prayer. So what she was doing is probably this, saying one section, our father, and then kind of elaborating on it in her mind, speaking to God, thinking of what the father is like, saying, speaking about her desire to see him face to face one day in heaven thinking about how the father is represented by uh, she's the prodigal son and the father receives her when, when she asks for forgiveness of her sins. It's his mental prayer. Then when she's exhausted all that area, she moves on to the next phrase, our father who art in heaven and uh, elaborates on that and so on and so, so forth. How will be thy name, thy kingdom come? And that lasted her 30 minutes. That is mental prayer. So we should know that it's quite possible to pray interiorly the sentiments contained in the Our Father without actually saying any of the words. That's mental prayer, praying from that silent interior uh, in the heart. In fact, every interior act of our mind that tends to unite us to God, whether it be recollection, examination of conscience, a loving thought of God, a desire for God, those are all mental prayer. And then further on, I'm not going to talk about this right now, there is a further distinction between informal and formal mental prayer that I'll speak about when the time comes, and there are also many different levels of mental prayer, um, such as contemplation when the soul is enraptured in God, like the things you read about St. Teresa of Avila experiencing and those sort of things. But I'll speak about that later. For now, those are the three types of prayer, liturgical, vocal, and mental prayer. Um, every healthy spiritual life should have these three forms of prayer in it. Now I know that it's not our fault, but most people can't have liturgical prayer these days because of the lockdown. But what we can do still is be extra devout in our mental and vocal prayers. Because remember, as I said, they are driven towards the Mass. They find their completion in the Mass. So that when the, when the day comes, when happily people can return to Mass, you can give a very big offering to God on the altar. So may God bless you. Tomorrow, we'll, uh, next time, we'll start speaking about uh, the Mass, which is the greatest liturgical prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as he was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.